Hey everybody, it's Andy Brown from GameSpot.com. Um, I'm here with Scott from Gearbox. Introduce yourself, what do you do on uh, uh, Borderlands? Yeah, my name is Scott, I'm a concept designer, so I, I'm responsible, I create a lot of the characters, environments, uh, just a, a lot of the general look and feel of the game. So. Well, that sounds perfect for a new DLC. You sound like <laughs> a man to talk to because you had to create new Everything. Yeah, we 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 created a whole new whole new areas, new enemy types, uh, new gear, new loot. Uh, I mean, the the whole gamut of things. So yeah. And talk about sort of you know this is the second DLC. What what did you guys want to accomplish? Well, in in terms of this one, uh, we we really wanted to focus on Torg uh, as a manufacturer. And if you're familiar with them in the game, you know they're all about. Just ridiculous exploding guns. Okay. So, <laughs> so this whole thing is kind of like this very testosterone fueled muscle maniac, like almost professional wrestling yep. NASCAR sort of. You, you'll figure, right? As far as that goes. So, this whole thing is very kind of machismo, I guess we'd say. It's like uh, it's very biker themed. So there's a lot of guys in leather or big just muscly dudes, <laughs> just like guys on motorcycles, uh, uh, just really trying to take that. Honestly, like, you know, if you're familiar, Borderlands doesn't really take itself seriously. Yeah, there's this, like that Borderlands irony to it all. Yeah, so this whole thing is just pretty tongue-in-cheek. Let's <laughs> just say that. So you're you're heading right now in this towards this uh, toward, towards this coliseum of sorts to. Uh, you have to get the badass on your board. What put you behind my grandma? Put ahead of some guy she come to death. It took several hours. If you want to open that vault. You got a rise in the leaderboard. Also, you need a sponsor for another fucking legal reasons. Get to the arena, and we'll set you up with one. So you kind of get a flavor. Uh, you know, this Mr. Torg is kind of your. It's sort of the narrator, the kind of mouthpiece of this entire thing. So, in, in typical Borderlands fashion, he's just the kind of ridiculous. And uh, well, we're kind of known for these NPCs that are over the top, and this guy is definitely probably the most <laughs> that we have gone we have gone for in here so now i guess back to like sort of a basic question of dlc stuff does the level cap raise like it did in some of the oh uh, this one this one does not okay. but um you know you're still you're still like you, you know you're progressing gain levels there's new loot there's new gear there's a whole new currency type called these torg tokens that have uh, there's certain vending machines that you can use to buy guns that you can only get in this DLC so there's tons of content there's there's bosses there's a whole new campaign so oh, cool. new new areas and new sections and everything so awesome so it's not just you know focused on this tournament no uh, one of the things that we're kind of talking about is this this culture of combat so there's this coliseum or arena in the middle of all this that is, is kind of where the the majority of this this situate this world I guess we talk about is focused around. So, if you've ever seen like Spartacus and things, there's this there's this this arena and there's this combat, but the majority of it takes place around what's happening on the outside oh, cool. of that. Okay. So all of this is like you know this is about like sponsors and like these fights and all this. So there's actually a whole it's it's a campaign. So there's questing like what you would what you would imagine from from Borderlands inside of here. So um, and then you will have these areas where there's this kind of punctuated like big crazy throwdown brawl fight that's going to happen. But then as you progress from that, you go on back to like right now he's just entered into the into, into the area. So this is kind of the hub for the whole uh, the whole place, and the call it, the the arena is in front of him there as he's kind of progressing towards that. Yeah, so Piston here, he's kind of the number one uh, combatant here. Ah. So here you get a little taste of him. A rigging finds promo, to gain number one rank. Yeah, a little bit. Whoa, Jeffrey. Well, I guess I say it have to do this. <laughs> and then I tell them to never call me a team. Classic Borland style of the title yeah. card pop in. Yeah, so Piston is our, like, just the top of the chain as far as the the, the combat here. Here's what Piston's offering, at Chickadee. Piston will sponsor you. Piston will take you under his muscly wing, and we will open that vault together. I've already set up your first fight in the arena. Get in there and show him that Piston and the Vault Hunter are a force to be reckoned with. Is it just me, or does it seem like he's gonna betray the f out of you? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and in typical, you know, you get this guy that's half muscle and machine and guns. No, he has no hands, he just has guns. You know, you got the Torg here screaming in your ear, like, 
Uh, and, and this is sort of like as you're coming up to this the arena for your kind of first taste of just the sort of gladiatorial combat here. And over here you'll see this is a new Torg vending machine um, that you, it has a new currency type called Torg tokens. So um, you can see um, we don't have any right now, but you can buy, you can only get these weapons inside of this. And uh, the item of the day is always a legendary, which is awesome. So in some ways, if you've got enough, you can just buy yourself into a legendary rather than <laughs> slogging through trying to find it. But now granted to do that though, it takes a while to accumulate enough tokens to purchase it, so. And the Torque tokens you only get by taking, taking part in these arena battles. Yeah, and, and so enemies drop them and such too, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. taste of the, the the arena itself here and once you're in there in the, in the middle here nice. it's got a very it's much bigger than i was like yeah yeah that. it's it's pretty epic because yeah. there's some pretty epic things that end up happening as in in here as things can move on so and there is loot there is uh, ammo and some loot out here so you can make sure to kind of you know get ready and once you enter into the middle you've sort of initiated like i'm, I'm ready to start this so ladies and gentlemen it's the moment you've all been waiting for the horde of horrors versus the vault hunter fight so so inside of this kind, kind of similar to uh you know the circles of slaughter in the main game uh you're gonna just have these tons of enemies coming out the cool thing about this is that they're gonna fight each other so you can use that to your advantage a lot of times and let them weaken each other. So there's actually a lot of strategy and a lot of, you know, there's higher perks and levels that you can get to on here, but there will be several tiers of the combat inside of here that gets you to until you actually complete this, the, the rounds. I do want to like stress that this is just a little this is the beginning. This is just the beginning, but it's also just a section of what this is. There's right. there's tons of there's a lot of new environments. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. oh wow, nice. That a, was that was beautiful. In, in the grand scheme of things, like after after doing that arena, though, you rise up to the the fifth ranked guy. So now there's this many ranks, you know, fourth, third, second, up to Piston as the number one. So now through a lot of the rest of the story is we're progressing forward to the beatdown, which is where Pyro Pete is at, where he is the fourth like in the chain of these guys. So now you're going here to try to sort of prove yourself once again, but also uh, now you're sponsorless, so it's kind of like trying to he has somebody hostage and you're coming here to try to help with that. The beatdown was kind of a nice example for us to kind of go a little, somewhere a little different in Borderlands. So this is a decidedly more urban environment. It's kind of like more industrial sort of like refuse from back. So now it's just kind of inhabited by bandits. So, but what's kind of nice about it is there's a little more tight quarters. It's a little more, uh, the, the intensity kind of really like ramps up when you get into some of these smaller spaces. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But uh, this was like another, once again, this opportunity that inside of these DLCs, we really want to make sure that, you know, you're fighting some guys that you hadn't really been fighting. You're going to some new places. Uh, you know, the gear and the loot is prevalent. Obviously, it's, it's Borderlands, but we want to continue. Nice. Yeah, there's already so much variety. Yeah, so in each in each of the areas, we tried to make them pretty drastically different, just just so that you know, like I think like this this is a pretty drastically distinct from where we were at before. So, but this also kind of goes along with this sort of biker theme and this sort of more urban environment that a lot of these guys are in. So, 
one thing that's kind of nice about this environment is like, um, as you can kind of see as you go around, there's a lot of ladders and catwalks and different places to get to. So especially when you're thinking about uh, the multiplayer experience, uh, if you're a sniper or if you're a support, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, there's sort of a pathway in, a, in an area that you can hang out with. But it gets pretty intense right around here, so we'll see. Uh, I think one of the things that I've always enjoyed as a as a as a, a, a concept artist and designer on these was you know, kind of trying to make these really beautiful, disgusting environments. <laughs> you know, like sometimes like he kind of looks around and I see something that looks like so pretty, yet it's uh, so set to this contrast of like like gross. <laughs> I just I just sort of love the fact that we we pulled off some of this stuff. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Headed towards Pyro Pete's, which is a bar up here. Screw him. <laughs> oh. So does each each leaderboard guy have its own dungeon you kind of go in? Yeah, there's That's kind of a, everybody kind of has their own place, so <clears throat> what's kind of neat about this one too is like inside of his bar here and you kind of get to uh, get into old fashioned bar brawl here, <laughs> which is kind of <laughs> nice. <laughs> get ready to grab a beer and kick some rear! Cause it's time for a beat down bar brawl! Just pick a fight with the trucks and stay alive! So this is kind of cool because now you come, uh, come into his bar and then... Well, no health, but it's up to you. You can just uh, start a bar brawl. These guys are all kind of civil. <laughs> nice! And now the, the brawl has started, so... What's kind of what's kind of neat about this section here, though, is like it's kind of like it's showing that you you know you're kind of doing this gladiatorial combat, but it's inside of this pretty dramatically different space. But you see these guys are all going nuts on each other and fighting. So try to keep each, each sort of thing fresh. So this is you know you've been coming towards Pyropedes, the fourth rank guy. Sentry deployed! Like completely, <laughs> like he just kept him slagged and like. With Pete dead, that sponsor chick he kidnapped shouldn't be far. Fire. Yeah, but that's yeah. One of the things we just tried to put so much kind of in this from these arenas, from the story, from the campaign, and um, once again too here in just a moment we'll have like kind of the, the little final shot. You know, we brought back some uh, some fan favorites here, so just yeah. The beautiful, the most buxom sponsor of the history of Pandora, Mad Moxie. Miss me, sugar? Thanks for the save, dog. So, Does having the season pass DLC kind of like make you guys a little bit, you know, you can gauge the excitement for a DLC and then you can like plan it a little bit better? Is that Do you guys prefer having this? Kind of I mean, regardless, we're going to approach DLC the way we always have, right? Like trying to do the best thing, you know, trying to try some new things, but also just do the best we can. And yeah, this definitely, you know, when we see the people and the excitement for it, of course, we're gonna, it's like, oh, okay, we really gotta, <laughs> you know, we really gotta like make sure that what we're doing here is uh, the best that we can do. So it, it's a little extra pressure, but it's good, you know? Yeah, and uh, yeah, we want that. We wanna make sure that, and as we're doing all of these, we listen to that. We listen to the fans, and we try to bring. We try to take some of their suggestions to heart, and just some of the feedback. So we want to bring back some NPCs. Like you see, Moxie here. She can actually work as a sponsor for you. Um, you might remember that she had some unique guns 
or you, you in the game and in this one too she kind of has her own line of things that you can get but also we're bringing back uh, uh, one of the other fan favorites that kind of goes along with this is a uh, tiny Tina from from the main game is is, is back inside of this too so um, and that's just kind of one of those examples of trying to you know <laughs> give the fans what they want but also just like let us go into some territory that we we had yet to go into yet so i feel like a lot of the things that we did like say if you even take general Knox from the last game i was like man we need to put mechs in this we need to put robots in this so we did and then by doing that i really felt like it made way into borderlands 2 an example for all the hyperion robots and all these things so we're just kind of trying to keep expanding and rolling out more and more of these things so that's awesome. So if people want to see, you know, even more crazy, badass stuff in Borderlands 3, get the DLC yeah. to support, to <laughs> yeah, support exactly. those by, efforts. By doing that, you know, we're yeah. going to have some more. But, yeah, I think that that's what we just don't want to become stagnant, and we want to make sure that we're continuing to create new content, new interesting combat, and not just kind of keep recycling those same things back at, uh, back at them. So. Awesome. And then so we have it on, on video. When is this coming out? How do people get hold of it? What does it cost? All that yeah, it's actually out uh, November 20th, and uh, it'll be out on you know, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC. It's uh, $9.99 or 800 Microsoft points, but if you have the season pass, you've already, you already have it. So That's amazing. Thank you so much for showing us this today. Oh, no, thank you.